Hey everybody, my name is Rick. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are going to talk about the Volt. And specifically, about six or eight weeks ago, I had to work here in the Tucson office Monday through Friday, which happens every now and then. The commute is essentially 40 miles, just a little bit over round trip. So it was a good test for the car to see if I could go a whole week without using any gas in the car. But I mainly want to focus on this commute that I did. Basically every morning, every time I got to work, every time I got home throughout the week, I looked at the estimated range the car told me. Um, and then I, at the end of the day, I show you how many kilowatts I used and then how many miles I drove and then the, the estimated miles that I would have left. Um, the interesting thing about this car is if you're not familiar, every morning when you get in, there's a number at the bottom left screen that says basically estimated EV range. And what it does is it uses the way you've been driving. I don't know how much like the last couple days or maybe the last few times you've driven the car to estimate that number for you. So the car's rated at 53 miles, I believe from the factory, but I've gotten as many as an estimated 68 miles from the factory um, on that number there. However, um, it's not really solid. So it could tell me it estimates 68 miles, but I could go out and drive crazy or go up hills drive against the wind, use the AC, and I'm not gonna get anywhere near that. So um, it is interesting, and I've definitely seen the car has done more than 53 miles um, of electric range, many times that I've driven it to empty. But anyway, let's get into that stuff, and then at the end, we'll talk about how much it costs to charge the Volt. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, basically, my goal is this week to not use any gas in the Volt, so we'll see how it goes. I think the commute is about 20, 21 miles, and I haven't really paid attention. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to see how it goes. This is the first day, and uh, we'll keep you updated. So we are going to be driving in low today, and that basically just allows you to do more of a one-foot driving. And it uh, also increases regenerative braking. I also use the regenerative braking paddle every now and then. And we're gonna be in normal mode, which basically means all electric. All right, I just arrived at work and we're gonna check out the numbers on the car here. So that went on basically every day for a week. I would record in the morning when I woke up on the way to work, record when I got to work, and then record when I got uh, home. And I put this chart together. I'm not gonna make you watch all those videos. and. Really, there's nothing super exciting that comes out of this other than some of these little things I want to show you on here, just little nuances of the car. Um, it's definitely capable of the 53 miles of predicted range that comes from the factory and even more, actually, which you'll see here. Over on the left side of the column is what the predicted EV miles were at the start of every day of the week. And again, these are just predicted. This is based on how you've driven the car. This is not a guarantee that you're gonna get these miles, but it is kind of interesting how it works out. So that here's the EV miles when I started the day. Here's the EV miles here in the middle, 44 when I arrived at work. And then here's the EV miles, again, predicted when I got back home. And as far as miles driven goes, pretty much the route is 20.9 miles and then when i get back home every day it's about 41.7 miles 4.4 kilowatt hours used on monday when i got home 8.8 .8 kilowatt hours total used which it makes sense the route is you know the same there and back now to get this number over here i added the ev miles that were left when i got home to the actual miles i drove and that would give me this, again, predicted 64.7 possible EV miles that I could drive on the car, now, given what I used and what I had left, again, predicted wise. Tuesday was a very similar day, other than you can see that my predicted EV miles in the morning had gone up to. Um, as far as the rest of the chart, it's pretty similar. 20.9 miles driven, 4.4 kilowatt hours used to get to work. And then everything's the same over here in the back home column, other than uh, I had 26 predicted EV miles left when I got home. 
which gave me a predicted 67.7 possible EV miles on Tuesday. Wednesday's a little bit of a different day because I had to do an errand when I was at work. Um, but I started at 65, got to work at 47. And then when I got home that day, I had 18 left. Uh, again, this day doesn't really jive up with the other two other than the fact that I just wanted to show you, again, predicted 65.5 left that day. I used 10.1 kilowatt hours total. Thursday's a little different as well because I went a slightly different route that included fewer climbs uh, or uphill and less kind of rolling hills as well to get to work. The distance is just about the same, not too much shorter, but you can see I only used 3.8 kilowatt hours. Uh, it could possibly be the temperature as well, or maybe just the way I drove, but I think it was more related to the hills and the inclines that I missed on that day. So at the end of the day, I had 30 EV miles predicted left. I drove 41.9 miles, and it gave me a predicted 71.9 possible EV miles total had I run the battery down uh, and everything continued to go as it was. I just thought it was interesting that the kilowatt usage was quite a bit different that day. Um, and again, I think it's based on the climbing of hills. Friday was the best EV day, uh, predicted EV day of 68 miles. Um, I did not go directly home on that day. So there is no data for when I arrived home, but it was a pretty typical day as far as miles driven and kilowatt hours used. So if you made it through that chart, thank you for still being here. The last thing I wanna cover is how much it costs to charge the Volt. I've had a few people ask me about that. And the bottom line is it's actually not very much at all. Here in Tucson, TEP charges 12 cents per kilowatt and the Volt battery, the full size of the Volt battery is 18.4 kilowatts. So if you did have to charge from zero and completely charge that battery, you're looking at about $2.20 day. So I figure you do that. It's about $20 a week to charge the battery if it went from zero to full. A couple things there. The way Chevy designed the car is there's really only about 14.4 or 14.7 kilowatts available of, us of usable battery. They made it that way uh, to fight degradation of the battery, I guess. That's what I've read anyway. So if it's 14.7 kilowatts, you're looking at about $1.76 to charge again from zero to fully to that full 14.7 kilowatts. Now, as you saw from my daily commute, I never ran the battery down to zero. So in reality, it's actually gonna be less than that dollar, dollar 25 a day to charge the battery. With the way gas prices are right now, um, it's pretty good. Again, I didn't really buy the Volt to save money on gas, though it has been awesome. I really bought it to save mile, save from putting miles on my Jeep, and it's worked out really good for that. And the bonus about the car is it's a really nice little car. I enjoy driving it. It's quiet. It's comfortable. The stereo is good. It has all the features you could ask for. Heated seats, heated steering wheel. Um, I've had no issues with it whatsoever as far as owning it. I did mention in the first couple videos I did, the eight pillars are kind of big, so you do have to get used to that. And then there's not great vision out the back either, but it does have all kinds of safety features, including a backup camera and it beeps at you, you know, cross traffic or people walking behind you or whatever, it kind of lets you know. So love the car. So far it's been a great addition to the family. Um, when I'm not using it, my wife drives it to work as well. And her commute's about, I think it's only about 26 or 27 miles round trip, but works out good. We both enjoy the car and I really think, you know, it's kind of a gem as far as a used vehicle goes. This is mine's a 2017 and it only had 23,000 miles on it and it's really a nice little car. So if you're looking for something EV wise, you don't want to spend the money on a Tesla or some of the other cars that are out there, or you don't want to worry about range anxiety. I think it's an awesome vehicle for that. I just did a trip up to Kingman, Arizona, and it's a little over, I think it's around 330 miles there. And, you know, I used the EV miles when I was around town up there. I used them to get across town here. And then on the freeway, I used the hold mode, which just uses gas. And it worked out great, even with the small, I think it's like eight and a half gallon tank. 
still worked out fine. Um, just on gas, you have an over 300 mile range. I think it's like 320, 330. And again, great little car. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have questions or comments, you can leave those below and we'll see you in the next one.